Greetings. I am the Emerald Mystic. I am here to speak to you people online, especially the misinformed, the misguided, and the ones that are in dire need of a guiding light in the 21st century. I am a very good friend of the wizard Ozzy Buko, and he has informed me that something has to be said about social media groups, social media groups and organizations. I want to start off by saying that there are many to be fair, there are many social media groups consisting of very knowledgeable people, very qualified people. But the problem of these in these social media groups is not so much the topic, the hobby, the interest. The problem is the people that make up such groups, just like any other organization. It could be non-denominational uh, churches, uh, 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 organized religion. It doesn't matter. It can be these groups where people meet up, where they have the same thing in common. They have the same thing in common. They have, they are like-minded people. Some of them are just enthusiasts that hitch along for the ride. Some of them are well-read, well-informed uh, experts. Some think they are experts. Some are delusional in their knowledge. Some are outright power freaks, control freaks, dictators, running cults, especially on Facebook. There's one such uh, totalitarian, dictatorial uh, uh, cult run by control freaks like Erwin Benz of the Time Warner show Keeping Country Strong. He's a retired New York City police officer He's a lush, he has a problem with alcohol. Uh, the producer of the show has informed the wizard Azibuko, and I have verification that the man is nothing but a lush, and he's a right-wing uh, conservative, and he runs a group called Hot Dog Nation. Yes, you heard it right, Hot Dog Nation. They actually have a tour bus that travels to all of the landmarks that have been around for the longest time. And uh, they are landmarks specializing in hot dogs, believe it or not. But the problem with Hot Dog Nation is if you criticize anyone, even people on the Food Network or the Food Channel. If you dare to disagree with anyone, they threaten to remove you from the group. They are a d dictatorship. Another one is Honest Craft Beer Reviews, uh, which was started by John Starodumsky, originally from the tiny, diminutive state of Rhode Island. Uh, the ocean state, I don't know why, uh, it should really be uh, detached from America and floating out into the North Atlantic. But anyway, John Starodumsky, now residing in Georgia, has appointed a mad dictator, an insane man that has the ability to hack into people's profiles and uh, uh, Photoshop uh, members of people's family, uh, uh, relatives of 
individuals that he targets. He's a hacker. He uses many aliases. His most popular alias of all, even though he has many, is Red Rooster. Uh, the Wizard Azibuko was uh, sent by Dr. Dave Coulter, the great Dr. Dave Coulter, a photograph of what Red Rooster really looks like because he uses a photo of a Rhode Island Red Chicken, a Rhode Island Red Chicken, a rooster, a chicken because he is a chicken. He has a federal job. He resides and he works in the state of Virginia. I believe he's connected to Homeland Security. But his supervisors would not appreciate the fact that he's using aliases to misrepresent himself online and he's hacking into people's profiles and he is photoshopping close family members of the people he targets. I'm sure, Red Rooster, you you ugly, funny-looking coward, I'm sure you, your supervisors that you work for that sign your paycheck would not appreciate what you have been doing. And I have the means to contact them. You are nothing but a wimp, a coward that hides behind aliases. So John Starodumsky, an ultra-liberal um, feminist sycophant, yes, yes, he called James P. Madonna, a good friend of the Wizard Azibuko, he called him a misogynist because he posted risque photographs on a former Facebook group that was stolen from him by Sash Boyle. Sash Boyle stole, of, of originally of Cleveland, Ohio, stole this group called, this group is about nothing. Yes, it was named after the Seinfeld episode. This group was about nothing. And because he posted risque photos like a real alpha male, like a real macho man. John Starodumsky and Tom Nolan, another uh, ultra-liberal, ne neoliberal Hillary Clinton-loving pussy. The both of them reported the honorable, the man with honesty and integrity, the truth-teller, James P. Madonna. He was reported, and of course the sycophant, uh, 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 male-hating feminists that are out, work out there uh, as, like watchdogs working for Mark Zuckerberg, one of the biggest sleaze bags known to man, the, the hawk-nosed geek that runs uh, um, Facebook. Yes, the control freak that runs Facebook. Okay. He terminated the group. He took the group away from him. And, uh, of course, Sash Boyle stole it and never, never made Mr. Madonna the administrator of the very group he created. So these are cults. These are social media group cults that have good intentions. They are... Uh, they most likely contain many knowledgeable people in, in, in the case of Honest Craft Beer Review, craft beer. Many, there are knowledgeable people in the entire craft beer, fine wine. It could be whiskey, bourbon, whatever. It doesn't matter. There are many fine, knowledgeable people in these communities. But the problem with these communities is not the topic. It's not the subject. It is the insecure, spineless, sycophant, Pollyanna weasels that make up many of these groups, like a group called, that happens to go live on YouTube. Every, supposedly now, it's Tuesday also, 
uh, Tasty Tasting Tuesday, I think it's called. And then there's Wild Card Wednesday. And then there's Thirsty Thursday. Thomas Metal 75 is the name he goes by. His first name is Eric. Eric is his first name. Eric uh, Freightliner or, or Freeloader or whatever the hell his name is. Eric runs it. Eric is extremely knowledgeable in craft beer, but he's a stiff. He has no charisma or pizzazz. He has no sense of humor whatsoever. He is so stiff. He is such a geek. He is such a nerd in craft beer that he did not like Mr. James P. Madonna's idea that he created called Fandango Friday. Fandango Friday was a concept that had charisma and pizzazz. It was a concept of a live craft beer show with no rules where people can bring any alcoholic beverage they wanted. Any fermented beverage. It could be wine. It could be a scotch whiskey. It could be bourbon. It could be rum, vodka, fine wine, craft beer, anything you want. There could be music played. There could be people with musical talent. But what did this Eric Freeloader, Fraulein, or whatever the hell his name is, of Mr. Thomas Metal 75, he scoffed at the idea because all of his all of his live hangouts, all of his live shows have to be stiff and rigid and serious because the man has no life. The man has no life at all. Okay, he is such a craft beer, a geek, uh, um, some borderline craft beer snob, which is the worst, by the way. The craft beer snob is the worst, much worse than a craft beer geek or nerd. But I don't think Thomas Metal 75 is a bona fide craft beer uh, 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 control freak. Uh, he is not necessarily snobbish because the man has potential. The young man is a rock and roll musician. He, he's very talented. He, he's part of a band. He plays a guitar. He is supposed to be free-spirited as a rock musician. You would think the man is, would be free-spirited enough to appreciate to appreciate the idea, the concept of Fandango Friday. Oh, but no. No, Eric Freeloader, Free, Free, uh, uh, Fra Fraheimer, whatever the hell his name is, uh, Freightloader. He scoffed at the idea of Fandango Friday. He wanted rules. He wanted rigidness. He wanted to be serious. You know what this man does? When the show goes off the air, Thomas Metal 75 doesn't talk about any other topic except craft beer. He continues to behave like he is still on the air. It's supposed to be a free-form discussion amongst people that were panelists on the live show. They can talk about anything. They can tell jokes. They can talk about their day, their personal life if they wish, their other hobbies and interests. They can talk about politics, but no, Thomas Metal 75 continues to behave like he is still on the air, like he's still on the air. How pathetic is that? The man is supposed to have a life because he's a rock and roll musician and a talented one at that, and he's extremely knowledgeable in craft beer. I will give Thomas Metal 75 credit. He is very talented and very knowledgeable. Okay. And I believe he is smart enough to be a progressive politically. But he has no uh, free-spirited uh, personality, sense of humor, pizzazz, charisma. He must continue to be serious. That's why he scoffed at Fandango Friday. Okay, 
there are other people that are very knowledgeable. They don't joke around. Uh, I wouldn't say they have pizzazz or charisma, but they are extremely knowledgeable in fine liquor, craft beer, wine. They're very well-read people. They do their research. I respect them quite a bit. One of them is John O'Neilly of, of Georgia uh, Beer Reviews, outstanding uh, shows that he does. I also respect a man who does have pizzazz and charisma, and I salute him. I salute him. He's one of my all-time favorites, and that's the beer whisperer, Tom Mulvihill. I love the guy. He's great. He's fantastic. The man knows showbiz. He entertains, plus he has great knowledge in what he's talking about concerning all forms of liquor. Uh, Dr. Dave Coulter is another man who's very well read, very knowledgeable in craft beer, and he has personality. He has pizzazz and he has charisma also. That's number two. And another man who is new to the shows is a, a wonderful man. I, 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 I felt positive vibes coming from him when I saw him on the show. That's Jeremy from the state of Arkansas, a great man. He, he's also in a band. He plays guitar, he plays harmonica. Very nice gentleman. A true Southern gentleman. And the last one I want to talk about. Um, uh, oh, by the way, a man that was ostracized and talked down to and ridiculed Mr. I believe Gary Owens of the, sta the state of Tennessee. He was disrespected. He was disrespected by Th Thomas Metal 75. And Jean-Pierre, formerly of New Jersey, now residing, I believe, in Mobile, Alabama, was thrown off because Thomas Metal 75 did not like the quality of his internet connection, so he was muted and removed. That was very rude, you little namby-pamby, you little leprechaun, Thomas Metal 75, how dare you do that? But the last one that has tremendous knowledge, pizzazz, charisma, and a sense of humor, he gets it. He gets Fandango Friday, and he gets personalities like, even though he hasn't, he stopped inviting Krampus. He never had me on his show, but he stopped inviting Krampus uh, for his own personal reasons. I don't know, maybe maybe he doesn't want to share the spotlight, but the man is extremely knowledgeable because he's a retired school teacher. He has pizzazz, he has charisma, he has a great deal of personality, and he has a great deal of high intelligence. He's a man that does research like no one else on the internet when it comes to fermented beverages. That is, Louisiana Beer Re Reviews one and only. Uh, Ronald J. Tirio. J. Tirio is the all time best, right alongside Mr. Tom Overhill from, I believe it's Springfield, Missouri. The Beer Whisperer. Those two are, are top of the line. But the rest of you's. Well, no, John O'Neilly is a very nice man, and, v and he's another great researcher, and he does very high quality beer review shows solo. But I want to say something. I watched the last last week's Fandango Friday. I watched it. And this this son of a bitch, I swear to I swear if it was up to me and there were no witnesses, I would drown him in the Hudson River or better yet, the polluted East River. He's a piece of shit. His name is Ronnie. Every every time he appeared on the show, this cox, this no good scumbag, would constantly 
stare down Mr. The Honorable Mr. James P. Madonna. Constantly stare him down because the man has keyboard courage. He doesn't have the guts to go through the Lincoln Tunnel. He doesn't have the guts to go across the George Washington Bridge and meet James P. Madonna face to face because James P. Madonna would bash his skull in. He's staring him down and he kept making snide remarks about accountants, the personality of accountants, because accountants have usually have no sense of humor uh, except for James P. Madonna's brother from another mother, close friend, confidant, and partner, the great Jeff Zambello. He has two master's degrees in finance and accounting, and, and no one has a sense of humor like him. But he's the exception to the rule. Many of them are like Woody Allen. You know, they have no sense of humor. They stare at numbers all day. Yes, yes, he did say that many of the craft beer shows, many of these uh, alcoholic beverage enthusiast review shows had no pizzazz, no charisma, no sense of humor. None. None whatsoever. They're boring. They put people to sleep. This is why they do not have a big following. This is why the ratings are so low. People, when people gave compliments to James P. Madonna as he was playing his instruments and, and ringing his bells, what did Thomas Metal 75 say? He says, oh, look at this. Of all people to get a compliment, it's James P. Madonna. Of all people. Ho, ho. And he had a, a, a sneer on his face, the look of contempt, like a musician that does not want to share the spotlight, a musician that must be on top at all times, must have power. Well, you're an insecure little man. You're an insecure little man, Thomas Metal 75, to, to have the attitude that you have of not wanting to ever share the spotlight with anyone. And Ronnie, I swear, if you were in front of me, I would, like an anaconda, I would squeeze the life out of your, your scrawny little geek neck. I don't know your last name, but Krampus should visit you. Krampus should visit you, kidnap you, take him to his lair, his cave, and slowly torture you, or just punch your your fucking face in the way you've been, you the way you used to stare down James P. Madonna at every chance you get at on every show. You have no guts. You have no courage. By the way, the challenge is still on, according to what the Wizard Ozzy Buko told me, according to how James feels about you staring him down and causing unnecessary drama on his, yes, that's right, his Fandango Friday. He created it. He's the brainchild of Fandango Friday. Uh, the, only, the only thing else I have to say about these insecure uh, power freaks, control freaks that run these groups, these dictators, is that um, you really do not have a life. You should really get lives. You're pathetic. And I think Dawnbusters, I think Jay Tyrio's Dawnbusters, that his ratings and his viewership will skyrocket if he had Krampus and yours truly, the Emerald Mystic, on his Dawn Breakers. Yeah, or is it Dawn Busters? Who the hell knows? Dawn Breakers. Yes, yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. Dawn Breakers, Dawn Busters. You know, a crack of dawn show. Pizzazz, pizzazz, remember that. Showbiz. You want you want ratings, you want people to be entertained, you want people to watch you. You have to do what they do on those TV shows. You cannot be dry, serious, and stiff. And, and be all knowledge with no entertainment. You must tantalize the public 
which is what people like the geek Ronnie and uh, Thomas Metal 75, super mega geek, they don't believe in it. They don't believe in entertaining their people. Thomas Metal 75 has potential. He's a rock musician. He's a talented young man. But just like many musicians, they're insecure. They do not want to share the spotlight. This is why he used to give James P. Madonna a trouble, trouble, problems every chance he got. He would make sarcastic remarks like that pussy Ronnie. He would make sarcastic remarks at James P. Madonna because he didn't want to share the spotlight. I just want to give a shout out to the great Tom Mulvihill, the beer whisperer, Dr. Dave Coulter, and the greatest, most educated man in fermented beverages on God's green earth, Mr. Ronald J. Tyrio. This is the Emerald Mystic. Goodbye for now.